All right, Jeffrey's got a question. This is a good question. What's the best way to track calories and macros when at the station and not being the one cooking? Now, best is a word that we don't necessarily want to focus on. Rather than focus on what's the best way, which would be become the one cooking at the station um, and controlling everything, we want to focus on what you will do, right? Because there's a billion different ways to do this, and everyone on shift probably has a different degree of how they want to handle this. Um, this is actually a really great question to post in the group because you'll get the opinions of other active duty people. What I'm going to tell you is this. Um, I was very fortunate at my station because what I was assigned uh, when we first started this journey um, was at Station 11A, the heavy rescue station where our special ops team was. And if it didn't involve tools, trucks, or training, it didn't matter. So it was very easy for me to make the decision to control my own destiny and bring my own food and hose rack because slimy lunch meat sandwiches and cold Marco's pizza just didn't really appeal. When I could eat my own burrito bowls, I could have my own pasta salad, I could have my own oats in the morning, I could bring my own Oreos to snack on, and I could make everything work for me. So for me, it was very simple. If anything ever came up that looked too good to miss out on, then I made sure I had tools in my toolbox to account for it. So I would plan for it when they went to the store. I would set aside my ingredients. I would put my sauces on the side. I would do things my way. Um, the other thing I would do quite often is, as you know, Jeffrey, the public sometimes likes to reward first responders with stuff that may or may not fit in their plan. So, for instance, when the box of donuts would show up, the one or two Boston creams that were in there would disappear because that happened to be this guy's favorite donut, and it would go in my bag to go home with me so I could plan for it the next day. So there's a bunch of different ways you can do this. My number one way is control everything you can control. My progress was more important to me than bologna, so it was easy for me to bring my meals. Um. So yeah, my station was a little different. I was fairly lucky the first couple of years because I was the newest rookie, so I was in charge of cooking. So I had a lot of hands-on say in what, what went into the meals. And I would separate foods, pull my veggies aside. If the guy's picadillo was a big one, ropa vieja was something we had a whole lot. I would pull my portions aside or pull sauces aside for me. If you can't volunteer to help with the cooking, and either one, see how much of what goes in it so you can try to estimate and track it, or two, volunteer to cook because whatever, you have a rookie or it's not your position, whatever it is in your station, it depends on how much estimation you're willing to do. What do they normally do at your station? So normally at our station, breakfast wasn't a thing. The guys all brought whatever they wanted to eat. They'd sit down and just grab something. Somebody be eating cookies at 8 o'clock in the morning on shift change. Breakfast wasn't a thing. So we didn't sit down and have breakfast together. We had lunch and dinner together. And lunch, most days, was simple. It was sandwiches or it was whatever it was. So that wasn't really a big deal. Um, so I would end up bringing snacks and breakfast for me, bring lunch for me. And then dinner, I would bring dinner for me or I would go in on what they were having because you sit down at the table. Normally, we make a plan, right? You sit down, everybody throws money, and you make a plan for what it is. Figure out, one, if it's willing, if you're willing to break it down, if it's worth it to you. Two, if they're having Nashville hot chicken fried sandwiches and somebody's going to go pick up fried chicken tenders from the, the place down the street, is it worth it to you to estimate and put it in and balance your day around it? Because, yeah, that might mean you have to have less lunch, no snack later. It really comes down to what's okay with you. Our stations were both pretty cool with us racking. I didn't get any trouble about it. I got a little bit of ribbing for a while, but that's the fire service. Like, that's What's everything, new? right? It wasn't like I was an outcast being forced to actually eat on the hose rack outside. So, is it worth getting a little bit of slack from your guys bringing your food? I don't know. 
If it is, then bring your stuff. If it's not, volunteer to help cook or watch what goes in it so you can estimate the best you can. Weigh everything possible. Um, or bring your own food. You know, man, um, there's a bunch of different ways to do this, too. Uh, one of the things is take an active involvement in the menu choice. Yeah. Rig the game in your favor. There are so many things that can be done in the firehouse that no one even really even needs to know you're tracking. You can do anything buffet style, whether it's tacos, make your own sandwiches, portion out your things separately, keep the ingredients separate so your salad doesn't turn into one that's drenched with blue cheese covered in calorically dense stuff if you can't make it fit. You can always say, hey, I like eating things separate because you guys don't want to be around me when I have too much dairy. You can always start rigging the game based on food sensitivities and allergies that you may or may not suffer from violently, but maybe it helps you keep things separate. Everybody loves a taco. Nobody loves anybody else to make their taco. So start rigging the game like that. Start making a movement towards foods that are easy to track. You know, it's a lot easier to track chicken and broccoli than it is chicken cacciatore. But you can definitely find comparable ways to estimate and you can see the ingredients that are going into it. What matters most at the end of the day is what matters most to you. Is it your progress? Is it consistency? Is it hitting your goals? Or is it eating everything the guys are eating? Because there's no right or wrongs here. But understand that they don't have to live with the outcomes of your choices. And you don't have to live with the outcomes of theirs. So every time I would rack, I would still go shopping with the guys. I would still help cook. We yeah. would all sit down and eat together. I'd have my food. They'd have their food. I'd clean. I'd do everything else with them. The only thing I didn't do was eat what they ate. And sharing the company of others, including sharing a shift with others, yeah. does not require you to share the plate. If you got jerried into a new station and... Um, or someone got jerried into your station, and for whatever reason, they were vegan, vegetarian, didn't eat pork. Allergic to shellfish. Allergic to shellfish. You're not going to do a crab boil. Yeah. You know, if they come in and they don't eat pork for religious reasons, you're not going to have barbecue. You know, at the end of the day, these are your brothers. They may chew on you, but nobody should try and drag you down for trying to better yourself. Sometimes they do, and that's something we need to work to change in the culture of the fire service and civil service as a whole is lifting each other up instead of bringing each other down. But the thing is, there's a million ways to do this. One of the coolest ways to do it is uh, what Coach Adam does. And Coach Adam is notorious for working 48s, 72s, 96s, and he literally goes to stations with a giant roving cooler that has tons of his favorite food, enough for multiple days, and isolated macronutrient foods that he enjoys, whether it's biltong, for protein, whether it's his favorite sauces for carbs, whether it's butter on a saltine for fat, whatever it is. So no matter what the crew does, if he wants to make it work, he can do the work to make it work. If he doesn't want to make it work, he eats his own food that he already enjoys. So that's something to think about too. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, there is no best way yeah. except for the way that's best for you to hit your goals and make the progress you're after. And at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. What's best for you, man? If you do decide that you feel that you need to eat with the crew for whatever reason, um, figure out which meal is the biggest. Chances are it's dinner. Usually dinner is the meal where everybody cooks all the things and sits down and eats. Could be different your station. Could be a Sunday and it's brunch day. Usually it's dinner. If there's one meal that's bigger that you guys plan and they come in and say, hey, we're making chicken cacciatore. We're making chicken Alfredo. Set your day up around that meal. So put that meal in first. Yes, it's going to be an estimation, but yes, you can go and search Carrabba's Chicken Alfredo. Put a serving of that in. Might be overestimating. Probably better to overestimate than underestimate. So if you're not sure and you decide, I'm going to eat dinner with them. I want to be part of the crew. This is part of my involvement with them. Cool. Put that meal in first and then start to backfill the rest of your day so that you don't go eat a dozen cookies in the morning with the crew and then eat Chicken Alfredo later and decide that you've blown 2,000 calories over your calorie goal. So... Plan that first if you can't bring your own food, if you don't feel comfortable, whatever the reason. That's probably the way I'd go with that. Here's another thing too, Jeffrey, that you can eat with the crew and not eat as much yeah. as the crew, right? You got an adult here and you got to make your own plate, right? 
there's no there's no clean plate club in the firehouse. And if there is, then you need to pick a real small one so you can yeah. add to it as you need it. One of the things we like to do, one of the things we like to do at Station Eleven, and I was on the recipient or the receiving end of this quite a bit as being one of the newer guys, is we're at the big house, so we had an engine, a truck, a staffed heavy rescue, and a rescue car, an ambulance, the box, the penalty box. And always been at station rescue stations, usually sometimes a chief or whatever. Yeah, chief and brush, yeah. What unit is most likely to miss dinner? You guys always, know it. Always the box. It's the box. It's that rescue car. And so what did we all like to do? We want to make sure we hook the rescue up with plenty to eat. Giant mountainous plates, tin foiled in the oven. So the rescue car <laughs> would come back after just getting getting it ground in the dirt. You know what I'm talking about. Maybe they oh missed dinner God. by one call, two calls, three calls, four Six calls. calls yep. It might be 1130 at night and they're coming back to eat dinner. Hey guys, here's your three thousand calorie plate. And here's this here's this plate with mashed potatoes and three steaks and all the sour cream and the cheese and everything. And and whatever the rescue do, crush it. Eat every bite. <laughs> eat every bite. So you don't have to do that. One, you don't have to do that to your brothers. You can put it in Tupperware and they can get out of the fridge if they need it. Two, you don't have to let them hook you up either, right? Just because it's on the plate doesn't mean you have to eat it. And if anybody says, oh, but what about wasting food? The food's already done. It's gone. You can't ship it to the starving children. You can't take it back to the store. So it's already wasted. You're either going to waste it in the trash or you're going to waste it on your waste. You know what I used to do? Where do you want it? It's going to waste. Which waste do you want it to go to? If they if somebody makes your plate or they pile on a bunch of extra, because here's all this, here's the leftovers. We gotta get rid of it. Get it out of the pot, right? That's a good thing. Here's the leftovers. Not throwing dishes. it away because I've made dishes. it. Yeah, it's great. They throw it all on your plate. What I used to do was take a bite or two, and then I would tinfoil it and put it in the fridge because I'm saving it for later. But what happens is I happen to be the one that would go and clean out the fridge a little later on and it would magically just disappear. And oh. everybody assumes that you ate it and they're like, okay, it's cool. Oh no, that sucker went in the garbage. I thought you meant you were saving for B shift to have it throughout the next day. I was like, savage, <laughs> savage. We clean the fridge. We are not. It's B-shifters. fridge day. It's fridge day. We clean the fridge. Anyway, Jeffrey, let us know yeah. if that helps. But uh, yeah, you got some strategies you can use.